Hello, editing me here in all my low quality glory. I forgot to say at the beginning of this video that I will be once again leaving a link down below where you can donate to the Quilluet tribe. As I'm sure you know, Twilight uses Quilluet tribe in the books, but the tribe itself has not, from my understanding, received any like profit or anything from that. The rep isn't good and therefore it just kind of appropriates their culture. Right now the tribe is raising money because a lot of their lands or all of their lands is in a tsunami zone so they are trying to move to higher ground. That's what the link below will be for so please go donate if you can it's important that when you read things that have problematic aspects to address those things and just basically do your part as a human being do y'all see the moon right now sorry for the noise of the fan but like it's past midnight on august 4th midnight sun is here and this is the moon are you kidding me? Good morning. This is extra string lights because mine are getting pretty bright so I think they're gonna burn out soon but oh my god she's so thick. Anything cool to the hard ass that nope looks like every other pilot look. So reading vlog I don't know if there's gonna be spoilers in this vlog or not yet I'll let you know. I don't know. I don't freaking know. Like, what do you do when it's a book that, like, you know the plot of? It's just from a different character's perspective. And so there's gonna be different things that we learn, like little crumbs. I don't know what pro call is here, but oh, it just smells fresh. I've literally only read the first page, but I'm already smiling so hard. And we're calling high school purgatory and just being his little emo boy self. So, midnight sun update. It's a couple hours later. I'm only 50 pages in. I had to like take a break to try to like wake myself up. I've been falling asleep a lot lately while reading books. It didn't happen that much when I was reading Twilight. But Edward's perspective is definitely a little more wordy, dense kind of than Bella's. It kind of does require a bit of a brain cell. So we're making our way through it. Might not happen as fast as I thought it would. I do have some tibbity tabs in here already though, of course. The opening line is literally like iconic. <laughs> this was the time of day when I most wished I were able to sleep. High school. Or was purgatory the right word? Dramatic emo boy. <laughs> And then literally on the next page, I just love these lines about what Rosalie and Emmett are like thinking while they're all <laughs> sitting at lunch. Rosalie was thinking, as usual, about herself. I got it. And then Emmett proving to be a true himbo. Edward's like, hearing Emmett's thoughts never felt intrusive because he never thought one thing that he would not say aloud or put into action. But I put a tab here because the irony. I was the last person who would ever stand as a protector of Isabella Swan. Honey. You've got a big storm coming. He's talking and having a conversation with her for the first time and it says, I smiled too, without choosing the expression. I wasn't trying to make her feel at ease. Her smile just made me want to smile in response, to be in on the secret. <laughs> Seeing Bella through Edward's eyes is just so interesting. So I think I've decided and I am going to have this be a spoilery vlog. So if you don't want to know anything about Midnight Sign, read her and come back. I think we obviously knew that being around Bella was hard for him because of how delicious she smells. But actually reading about it is so different. It's like, oh my god, he really wanted to kill her. How is he going to get 
to the Edward we know, like the one that would literally die for her, could suck the venom out of her arm. Also really enjoyed seeing him go to Denali and his little conversation with Tanya and Tanya, Tanya wants that popsicle dick, <clears throat> which like, uh-huh, I, I understand. So I am now, 170 pages into Midnight Sun. I truly thought that I would like fly through this book similarly to how I have the rest of the Twilight series, but there's something about this book that is just, it drags a little, not in the sense that nothing is happening, although a little, but it's in the way that Stephanie Meyer feels the need to basically tell us every thought that Edward has, and it's like, like it's a lot. It's something you kind of need to take breaks from. Like there's no way I'm gonna be able to keep like reading this all night. It's not bad necessarily. I just wish it had some editing because it's a lot. Also I'm gonna try not to give you like my every thought, like every single tab I have. Cause I don't want this video to be super long. I don't want to drag it out. But there are some things that I was like, okay, gotta talk about this. So first of all, when Edward saves Bella from the van crushing her, he has this line where it says, a word I'd never said before in the presence of a lady slid between my clenched teeth. Okay, old man. I'm guessing he said fuck or something like that, or hopefully it was at least that, not like, shit. And then they're at the hospital and Charlie arrives and we learn that while Edward can hear some of Charlie's thoughts, it's like, harder for him to pick up on them it's not very clear so charlie has like a little bit of what bella has and i'm just like oh see that's what i really wanted from this book not edward's every single thought about bella and how he's very innerly conflicted how he wants to snap the neck of every boy who even looks at her especially mike newton and just all these very like little mundane things that aren't noteworthy it's like stephanie you could have left some of this out but i am still enjoying it for like a moment like this when edward says super sweet things which is again why i'm not gonna show every thought because like if i do everything he'll be like okay but this he's talking to carlisle in the hospital and when he had saved her from the van her head had hit the ground and carl's like okay i'm gonna go check on her and edward says please i'm so afraid that i hurt her soft boy who also wants to strangle every man that Bella comes in contact with. One of my favorite moments in the book so far is after the whole thing with Edward saving Bella and Bella having obviously seen him miraculously push the van and miraculously get over to her. They're having like a family meeting at the table in the Collins house and Rosalie and Jasper are like okay so we have to kill bella and just getting to see the dynamic of the cullen family especially without bella present is so interesting and then alice has a vision and edward obviously sees it because he reads everyone's thoughts and he like freaks out because she sees two possibilities either him killing bella or bella becoming one of them and alice says you are so blind edward can't you see where you're headed can't you see where you already are it's more inevitable than the sun rising tomorrow morning it's more inevitable than the sun rising tomorrow morning i I'm not alive. Like, this is why I wanted this book. Like, moments like that. And then we have the first time that he watches her sleep at night because he just has this overwhelming anxiety that something is gonna happen to her. He's there and he sees a spider and he's like typing it and being like, okay, it's not venomous, but their bite can hurt. And it says, perhaps I should have let the creature be, but the thought of anything hurting her was intolerable. Where's my man to sleep in my room and kill all the spiders? I will say I can definitely see see like the people that don't enjoy this book and give it like one star being like edward is so creepy because he's like continuously like watching her sleep or following her to school when he can't be there because it's sunny and eavesdropping and i'm just like it's a little much it might be it might be a little much a little creepy like i thought bella was a simp for edward but oh no no edward is a simp for Bella, the way that he's just like so in love and so obsessed and having to see his inner conflict of like, I'm not good for her, but I love her and I must protect her, but I should stay away. It's like, okay, Edward, we get it, you're an emo boy. He also has his moments where I'm like, Edward, really? 
like this. It says, normal human girls wouldn't raise their faces to drizzle that way. Normal human girls usually wore makeup, even here in this wet place. Bella never wore makeup, nor should she. The cosmetics industry made billions of dollars a year from women who were trying to, as to attain skin like hers. That awkward moment when you realize Edward wouldn't want you because you're too much like other girls and you wear makeup. One other thing that I'm loving about this book though is like I said, literally any information we get on the Cullens. He was talking about how easy it was for like Rosalie and Emmett and Alice and Jasper and Carlisle and Esme with their relationships. And it said, talking about Esme, she'd met Carlisle as a girl and drawn to his gentleness, wit, and otherworldly beauty, formed an attachment that had haunted her for the rest of her human years. Like, did we know that they met before? Four, she was a vampire? I don't, I just read the books and I should remember that if we did. Like, it's so cute. Like, Esme in this book, like, we already knew she was so. Mm. There was one line that was like, if Carlisle was the soul of the family, Esme was the heart. And I mean, so yeah, now I'm at the part where Bella is with Jessica and Angela in Port Angeles and of course Edward followed because he's like, must protect her, there could be danger, she's human and weak. Also, I think people are gonna complain about how like stereotypically catty Jessica is because her head is a very interesting place. Hello, so it's been a hot minute. First of all, I know my hair looks whack. This is not the final process. This is just what girls with dark hair have to do if they want to have a little fun. It's Sunday now and I just finished Midnight Sun. Lighting sucks because it's so gloomy. So yeah, I obviously did not update as I was reading this. It took me much longer to get through than I expected. I thought it would be a breeze like all the other Twilight books, even though this is a good hundred pages longer than Twilight. Now, I'm not going to take you through all of my little tabs because yeah, that would, that would, that would take a while. You probably looked at that and went, oh my god, you must have loved it. You have so many tabs. Here's the thing with this book. I am very love-hate with it. I would say the first half especially is like so slow and harder to get through. The second half definitely did pick up. Let me tell you why. This definitely, I had much higher expectations than I got. Maybe that was my problem. But I was just very excited to see Edward's perspective. I love Edward Cullen. I'm a simp for that vampire. Empire man and I was like it'll be so cool to see what he's doing when he's not with Bella and get more interaction with his family and all that first of all the problem Stephanie Meyer writes like every thought that Edward Cullen has ever had in his entire life also especially in the beginning of his relationship with Bella so much of it is like oh my god I don't know what Bella's thinking oh my god what could her reaction mean oh my god I don't know what I'm doing oh my god oh my god and I'm like Edward. First of all, it's hard on the reader because with Twilight, you're so sucked in because it has that sort of like mystery to it of who is Edward and you know, what's it like to be a vampire and just this budding relationship and it's just addicting. But with Midnight Sun, we already know everything that Bella's thinking. So there's really no mystery to the reader and Edward is just so extra. Like I can definitely see a lot of people giving this like one star just based on Edward being a little creepy and definitely overbearing and protective. There's so many scenes where we would read Twilight and think Bella was just like chilling in her house or whatever and like Edward's off doing things. No! <laughs> Edward is like outside her house in the trees. As for what I did like about this, it was just every part of what I was hoping to get out of it, which was additional information, things about the Collins that we didn't obviously have a look at because we are limited to Bella's perspective, his relationship with his family members, things about his past, just things like that, little new things, not just Twilight again, except longer and more drawn out and like almost painful to read at times. Like this got a little exhausting because like I said, Stephanie Meyer writes like every thought that Edward has ever had. And there's just so much internal monologue of Edward being like, I love her, but I'm wrong for her. But does she love me? How, how could she possibly? And it's like, oh my God. But the reason the second half really picked up is because 
Edward stopped having this internal monologue and there was less questioning about Bella and her feelings and more just focusing on the action and we got more new details and like I said things about the Collins etc etc and that part I loved I was eating that up for breakfast that's mostly what my tabs are it's either that or like cute little things where I was like <laughs> I did write a few things down in my phone that I wanted to like specifically address first of all Angela Weber is such a standout character in this book that I wasn't expecting it and it's just wonderful I love when he's like I want to repay her for like being a good friend to Bella and so he kind of like sets up her in bed which is really cute again like I said any additional information was great but like in specific I like the scene where Edward was asking Bella questions about herself because we actually got specific answers whereas in Twilight Bella just kind of glosses over it like for example we now know that the CD she had in her CD player was a Linkin Park CD. There was a lot of different like sweet moments with the Cullen family, each individual member, like obviously Carlisle, we love him, got even more of that. Esme, there was so many cute moments where she was just the cutest mom ever. I loved at the end seeing how Emmett and Jasper were so protective of Bella and how much they already loved her. Rosalie is such a bitch, like more than I even thought, but like, it went with her character. There was this one scene where Edward is thinking back to his time with Carlisle and it was his first Christmas since he was turned. Carlisle like sends him out on an errand and it's like significant because it's his first time like being alone where people are in the vicinity. But he comes back and Carlisle put up a Christmas tree for them to decorate together and he was like Merry Christmas Edward and I wanted Cry. I probably I probably was crying. I also really enjoyed the chapter of Edward and Bella in the meadow where he shows her his sparkly skin for the first time. That chapter was really cool from Edward's perspective just because we got to see how difficult it was for him and really know that in that moment Alice had seen like this will be either the moment where you fully feel okay with yourself and being around Bella or the moment where you kill her so even though we knew what was gonna happen it was still like a really interesting thing to see from his perspective. Then I wrote down this whole quote because Edward is such a little emo boy. So the context of this is basically that vampires they can like eat and put things into their body but they have to regurgitate them to get them out since their bodies are obviously not working to do the processing stuff. But Edward says, I swallowed Bella's tear. Perhaps it would never leave my body. After she left me, after all the lonely years had passed, maybe I would always have this piece of her inside of me. I can't stand to be so emo. And then the last thing I wrote was Milwaukee in all capitals because there's a scene where Edward's like remembering something from his past in Milwaukee and I was just like, Stephanie did that for me. Also something really cute was in the acknowledgements. I have never seen this personally done before. I'm sure it has been. But the last thing it says is, and finally the readers who are so patiently eager for this book. I never would have finished without your support. You belong on this page. Please write your name on the line below and give yourself a high five. So like there's literally a line where you can write your name. And if that's not like the cutest thing ever, I'm just like, so yeah, those were all my Midnight Sun thoughts. I mean, not all of them, clearly, but I guarantee you don't want all of them. I think I'm gonna give it three stars just because I said the first half, slog, oh my god, way too much. The second half, much more interesting, gave us a lot more new content, and I wasn't like painfully in Edward's head. This was definitely a journey. It was a trip. I've been so in my like twilight state of mind these past couple weeks because if you watched my last video I recently reread the entire series. I watched all the movies. Then it was Midnight Sun. I definitely had a duty to my 13 year old self to read this book and I'm not unhappy that I read it. I wish it would have been better. I wish there was just some editing, like it just needed a lot more editing. Even to the point where I found like typos. Typos in one of the biggest books of the year, kind of like. But okay, that's all for this video. I'm sorry it didn't really end up being that much of a vlog because I was not good at getting footage. If you have read Midnight Sun, let me know what your thoughts are. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.